Welcome back. We're talking about dreams. A very, very significant moment happens in the history of mankind. Mary, who's favored by God, has a visitation. And in the, visit, in the visitation from the angel of the Lord, the Spirit of God rests upon her and she conceives a child. She has this very personal experience with God. Of course, the man she was about to marry, Joseph, did not have that experience. So he's contemplating, what do I do with this woman who, who, you know, she's pregnant. But in his world, no one falls pregnant other than they've been with someone. And so he's, he's a very good man. He doesn't want to disgrace her. And he's trying to figure out what to do next. <clears throat> and so then... Verse 20, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And so this to me is quite significant because whether you are uh, expecting a certain outcome in your life, whether you find yourself in, a, in a, a situation that you didn't necessarily create for yourself. In this instance, uh, Joseph, he didn't create a situation where his wife would be, or his wife-to-be, his betrothed one, he didn't create a situation where she would fall pregnant. Neither did he ever think in his wildest dreams that this Mary that he was going to give his rest of his life with would end up being pregnant before they got married. And, and what do you say to a community? And how do you go about this kind of stuff? Because... If she's pregnant and, and Joseph is the one that's going to marry her, well, then, of course, he's got a problem to solve. And his problem is they're going to think I slept with her out of wedlock. But I didn't. So, but if I marry her because she's pregnant, this is, this is not a good reputation thing to have in those times. So then someone else must have. And how do I go about living with her? Quite a, quite a serious problem for Joseph to face. And as he's considering this, having some deep thoughts about it, maybe he was in a zone of sleep, 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 because later on, as we said to you previously, he, when he awoke, he started acting on what God told him to do in the dream through the angel. Well, <clears throat> It's, in, it's amazing to me that when we talk about dreaming for the future, we often want to say, this is my ideal dream. This is what I would love to have as my most uh, preferred outcome. Well, with Joseph, this wasn't so much about a preferred outcome. This was about, in his mind, rescuing a bad situation. But when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, not only did he address the problem that he was facing, but he also gave him an instruction for the future. And so I want to just read this to you. When Joseph, verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. Watch this now. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. You know, if you talk about uh, someone who has a dream, a man who's marrying a woman, the way they consummate their marriage is by having intimacy. So now he marries someone that he doesn't have, he doesn't have permission to touch her for nine months, at least nine months in their marriage. You talk about a dream that directs your future but is not necessarily your preferred outcome. So when we talk about dreams, it's not always this happy-go-lucky, hey, airy-fairy, let's dream about bigger cars, bigger houses, bigger things, and let's dream about, you know, all the wonders of how great things I can have in life. It will include that, but it might be something that is a problem to solve. Certainly for, for Joseph, <clears throat> I mean, there's no doubt about it. As you read into the next chapter, you know, God sends rich people into his life to bring gifts to Jesus so that Joseph and Mary ended up becoming extremely wealthy 
because of Jesus. There is no way that if you obey God and what God gives you in a dream, there's no way he's not going to provide the resources for your future. But I hope that you're beginning to see that whenever you have a dream, there's going to be this tussle between what's the preferred outcome and what is it that I really have to face before I can have an outcome and before I can experience the favor of God. We'll talk some more about this. See you soon.